Father, thank you so much for the word of the Lord on this youth Sunday. Thank you for the worship that has gone forth. And thank you for the cry during the worship, the sound that went forth. Fill us up, Lord. We want more of you and less of ourselves. God, we thank you for young people who unashamedly and unabashedly honor you by worshiping you, opening their mouths and their hearts, lifting their hands in worship, pouring out their hearts before you, my God. Thank you for their leaders today, for Ty and for Millie, as well as for Aaron, Lord. Thank you for how you blessed Aaron yesterday with a beautiful bridal shower. Thank you, Lord, for the things that you're doing in the midst of the soul mind. We're just appreciative for those who minister in the word, for the young people who sing, Lord, for those who serve in various aspects of the ministry, whether it's visual, audio ministry, Lord, serving in children's church, my Lord, serving as a hostess, open the door and greeting you with a, a mighty amen. Thank you for a beautiful Amir, beautiful Elijah. Thank you for Burger, Lord. Thank you for Miguel, Lord. Thank you for Jessica. Thank you for Toria. Thank you for Girls for Christ, Lord. Thank you for Ayana, Lord. Thank you for Isaiah. Thank you for our young people who are moving out in ministry. Thank you for Jalea, Lord. Thank you for all of them. I know there's some that I've left out not on purpose, but God, I can't name them all, but you know, before you, we intercede for them weekly. And as well as daily, when we're all praying for our children. As well as once a month with Moms in Prayer, and we see the answers to our prayer in the life of our children. We are so appreciative and so thankful for what you're doing on this special day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Mia, yeah, that was awesome. Where's Mia? That was awesome. I, I, I enjoyed it. My, my, my audio ran out right at the, in the middle. Oh, my goodness. I've done so much filming, I didn't get a chance to download it onto my laptop to clear some room for it. But that was awesome. Great, 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 great. I'm going to take this earring off because I know it's going to be a problem. Thank God. We're going to look at the life of Peter today, the life and the legacy of Peter. I think it's so important when you think about what today is. Anyone know what today is? Pentecost. Yes, Pentecost. Pentecost, amen. Signifying the 50th day after the first fruits. First fruits was the resurrection of our Lord from the grave. 50 days. Is there something that 50 days has actually gone by that quickly? Amen. It's going by that fast. And now we're uh, into Pentecost. Yeah. Pentecost is a very powerful day. We know that Jesus told the 120 disciples, many of them being women, to tarry in the city of Jerusalem and wait until they were endued from on high with power. They probably didn't know what that entailed because they had never had that kind of experience before. But we know that it was a phenomenal experience that just rocked the world. Mm -hmm. And the world was there at Jerusalem <coughs> celebrating Pentecost. And God uses every opportunity in life, moving through seasons and cycles and bringing change to the life of men and women so that our lives will give glory to him fully. And I just asking the Lord, you know, Lord, how should I go about bringing the message today? And what would really bless the hearts of the people? And He showed me today being Pentecost, one of the central figures, aside from Holy Ghost, because you know Holy Ghost is the central figure of Pentecost, right? Amen. He is. It's Peter. Peter is that central figure, and next to the Holy Spirit. And you look at his life. And we're going to look at Matthew, so we're going to just stay in Matthew, but before we do that, I just want to show you some accounts in Scripture where um, what was spoken of many, many years prior to Pentecost was spoken through the prophet Joel. So if you look at Joel chapter 2, we can just look there, uh, verse 28, I believe it is, and then we'll go on over to... Uh, <coughs> 
X and see the, com the fulfillment or the, com uh, I shouldn't say the completion because being filled with the Holy Spirit is not just a one-time act. The Bible says be filled with the Spirit. It's present. You are constantly asking for the infilling of Holy Spirit. That's what I appreciate today, Val. Val was our vessels of worship, our young adult worship team, because when you can break out of the confines of just thinking that God can't use you because you're young, that's when he wants to use you, because he wants to use sons and daughters, and you'll see that here in the scripture, who will make themselves available and who will cry out for more of his presence, more of his spirit, more of his glory in their lives. And so Joel sees this, Joel chapter 2, verses 38 through 32, says, and it shall come to pass afterward. I'm sorry, Joel 2, 2, 28. Did I say 38? Yeah. I'm sorry, thank you. Joel 2, 28 says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens, and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Now let's look over here in Acts right fast. Acts chapter 2. Looking at verse um, 14, it says, if you're there, Acts 2, 14, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice, this is Pentecost, and said unto them, ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words, for these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. So the hour actually began, the first hour began at 6 in the morning. So this is 9 o'clock in the morning. The Spirit of the Lord is moving mightily in the midst of the people here at Pentecost. Peter lifts up his voice and he says, it's funny how he has to actually defend what is actually taking place. Hmm. He says they are not drunk with wine, as you suppose. There is a level of experiencing and encountering God's presence, whereas he overtakes us, and in him overtaking us, it's hard for us to stand upon our feet. You understand that? We begin to look foolish. We begin to feel his spirit all upon us. I don't know if you've ever felt that before. You said you felt it when you led worship last Sunday. I felt, I felt it. I felt it. I have uh, felt it various times. I have felt it leading worship. I have felt it in intercession. You know, where his spirit just seemed to almost rock me. Anyone, any, any of you ever feel that way? Have an experience? There's more than just that experience. And sometimes it makes you look a little foolish because you don't want to feel as if you're bringing um, attention to yourself. And it's not that, it's just you're yielding more to Holy Spirit. And as you're yielding more to Holy Spirit, he is pouring more of himself into you. See, he goes and into vessels where he's invited. He doesn't force himself. No. He goes into those vessels where he's invited to come. And it's the sad thing is how in the church, in the present day in which we're living in, he is treated almost as a spook. 
where people are afraid of the Holy Spirit, yet he's the most important agent in the earth today. Jesus said, it's expedient that I go. I got to get out of here. That's what he said. I got to get out of here. Because if I don't get out of here, he won't come. And he has to come. He has to come. He has to be in the earth because that's his ministry is here in the earth with us. Yes. So we need to get to know him more than a ghost. You know, I think about all the labels that were put on him when we were growing up with bad theology. Yes. Bad theology meaning bad teaching. Yes. You know, we talked about the Pentecostal church up the street and all the noise that they made and, you know, and the tambourines and turning over pews and we thought that was the Holy Ghost. It's just the overflow of joy that people have when they experience the flow of the Holy Spirit. But the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Holy Spirit should work together hand in hand. In other words, the Holy Spirit um, should fit over our body and he does like a glove fits over a hand. He fits us Perfectly, And there are gifts that should be accompanied by fruit. And there's fruit that should be accompanied by gifts. Yeah. I just want to show you that because I really do feel the Holy Spirit just leading me in a different direction right now. But let me just show you some where I just started here. In 15, for these are not drunken as you suppose. You will feel yourself. Let's experience. Let's think about this experience. What Peter and the others are experiencing at Pentecost, it knocked, it rocked them. It rocked them. He, he's trying to defend how they're looking. Anyone have been drunk before? Raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Come on. Look all around. None of us have been. We don't need to be ashamed. We've all been drunk. It's not a, it's not a nice thing, is it? No. no, it is. It's not a pretty picture at all. So imagine when you're drunk in the Holy Ghost. When you're drunk in Him. Amen. Amen. He's not going to leave you there in the gutter for somebody to take advantage of you. But we're talking about being so immersed in the glory of God. And you know, when you begin to experience Him at this level, my goodness, you begin, I believe, to see open portals of glory in the heavens like never before. You begin to see in the spirit realm. I believe the gifts of the spirit begin to open up to you all the more. All the more they do. And you know what? We should desire that all the more. We should not just be satisfied with just a tongue experience and think that's it. That's the beginning of the flood of the glory of God that wants to infiltrate, and I love that word you guys use today in the song, permeate. Mm -hmm. You have pores, you pour water on yourself. You have a sweat, you see the, how you sweat, and then sweat comes all through your pores. You know, you, you sometimes you're soaked. Any of you ever been soaked in sweat? Oh, Imagine that we are soaked in sweat, or you've, well, you've been immersed in water. You come up, you're completely covered. That's how we need to be. Because that's the only way they were able to rock the world that they were living in. Now that's the, the whole backdrop of this thing here is Galilee, which was a place of, of, of where the, a, a great number of the Gentiles lived amongst the Jewish people. And it was a place where there were several storms, not only storms that were storms with the weather, but there's just the storms of life that people found themselves going through. For one, because they were under the rule of the tyrannical Roman government. And they were waiting for a Messiah to come and to save them from this government. And he came and gave them a government that's upon his shoulder. Mm. And he comes to his own, and his own receives him not. But as many as received him, that's you and me. Who to them gave you power to become the sons of God. So as sons, we need to be experiencing what sons should experience. Mm. And as daughters, because he says it in here, 
He just doesn't say sons. He says daughters. He says handmaids. He says men servants. He couldn't put everything in that scripture that we were supposed to experience, but it gives us glimpses of what it is we're supposed to at least initially begin to experience. Initially. He says, but, 16 says, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. We just looked at Joel. Mm -hmm. He says, it shall come to pass in the last day, said God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. See, this is something that the world needs. This is why I believe boardwalk ministry, where we go out amongst the people, the whole spirit of worship and praise and intercession is so important yes, because is. people need to be changed from the inside out. Amen. But the spirit will come upon the flesh and they'll begin to respond to him. But what he's trying to do is to get an invitation yeah. inside of their hearts. Amen. He wants to change the culture. He wants to change the atmosphere. He wants to change the hearts and the minds of the people. Unfortunately, we've become a stay generation rather than a go generation within the body of Christ. He's told us to go, not to stay. That's right. Our staying is what has messed us up. And young people, I know uh, there are a whole bunch of young people here this morning, but there are many of us who are young at heart, amen, and those with the last name, young, <laughs> amen. But we have got to get the mentality that there is more than what I have experienced. Yes. And even if we haven't experienced it, we need to ask God for the experience each and every day of our lives. He says, it shall come to pass in the last day, say of God, I will pour out my spirit of 17 upon all flesh, and all flesh he wants to pour it upon. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. He says, your young men shall dream dreams, and your old men shall see, your old men, I'm sorry, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. All my servants, you find yourself in there somewhere. I know my handmaids, I will pour up my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above, signs in the earth beneath, blood, fire, and vapor of smoke. The moon, the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, I want you to look with me at, at I'm going to just follow the Holy Spirit right now. Let's just go to Galatians right fast. Galatians, just Galatians. Just see some things the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. That's right. He has fruit. Okay, Galatians 5.22 says, but the fruit of the Spirit, this is that same Holy Spirit, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Do we live in the spirit? Do we live in the spirit? Well, there's fruit right there. Do you have love in your life? Do you have love in your life? And, it's, and you know, you can have love for the brother. I'm talking about love when folks don't love you. <laughs> but you still have love for them. That's how you know you really have love. That's right. that's true. Let's, let's face it. It's not a matter of that gooey kind of feeling. He, he, apparently Christ is talking about uh, something beyond the norm of what we are used to feeling every day when everybody accepts us and things are just going well in our lives and we're at peace. He's talking about when it seems as if it is not there and you still have to love. Yes. Yeah. Or there is rioting, you're living in tumultuous times, and things seem to be settled, and, un and there is an unrest, they're chaotic, there's pandemonium, but you have what? Peace. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about that. He's talking about long suffering, you know, when you want to give up on folk and individuals, and you're ready to throw in the towel and call it quits, and he says, no, the Spirit says, suffer longer. That's Jesus. He says, they add, if they ask you to go one mile, what do you do? Go two. You don't go with the person that they have a need. You don't feel like meeting a need. You, 
know, it's like, it's, it's inconvenient right now, Lord. But he's saying, do what I would do. And this is what I would do. He says, gentleness. You know, sometimes you want to be rough. You don't want to be gentle. You know what I'm saying? You want to handle this a certain way. Because really, this is how it should be handled right now. You know? You don't want to show goodness. You don't want to operate in faith. That's exactly what the answer is. I don't need to operate in faith right now. You know how we get. And that's what the Holy Spirit, he arrests all of those feelings in our life. So that we can look like Christ. Because if we do the opposite, we don't look like Christ. And we're not walking in the Spirit. Simple as that. And he says, let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. We shouldn't do those things. Amen. Now look at this. Now that's the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Let's look at the power of the Spirit. Let's look at the power. Look at 1 Corinthians. I think it's in chapter 14. Go back to tag. 1 Corinthians 14. Oh my God. Actually, it's all over 14. It's all over. I can't even read it all. But if you if you look in chapter 12, it's looking 12. Paul just lays it out. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 1 says, not concerning spiritual gifts. How many of you have spiritual gifts? Amen. Wow, there's spiritual fruit. Mm -hmm. Now here are the spiritual gifts. 12 1. Brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Don't be ignorant of spiritual gifts. They're gifts that God has given to us in the body of Christ. You can go through this whole gamut. He says, you know that you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. The things that you exalted in your life and you yeah. thought were important yeah. and essential. He says, they were nothing more than what? Dumb, dumb, dumb idols. idols. And he says, you were Gentiles. But aren't you thankful that we're living in the time of the Gentiles? Yes, we are. We were led by them. We know the things that enticed us. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speak about the Spirit of God, call of Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is the Holy Guest. He's the Holy Guest. He's the Holy Guest. He's the guest in my car when I'm driving. And he tells me, you're driving too fast. You can say that. You can say that. Amen. He's the guest to let you know you're spending too much money right now. You know, and he's not loud and he's not boisterous. Or what you're thinking right now, that's not the father's thoughts. He's that guest there. It says... Now, these are diverse. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but it's the same spirit. Look at, look at his flow. Look at his function. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God, which worketh all in all. But the manifestation is given to every man to profit with all. He is given to us because we need to profit. In other words... There should be some return, meaning there should be some type of manifestation in our lives that he is present in our lives. And he is just not for us to feel good. He is meant to be given out to individuals and impacted so that their lives are touched and they are never the same again. They need to be touched. That's the spirit of the Lord needs to fall upon them. Whereas we think about Peter. How, do you, how does this happen? He walks next to folk and they get healed just by his shadow. New Testament. They get healed. That's not just something for Peter or something for Paul. That's something that believers, just imagine, that's something that believers, those are the kind of experiences we need to ask God for. How many people have you, we walked past and we know, my God, that brother's insane and he's demon possessed. Mm -hmm. And you know, you just, you, and you pray for him when you walk past him. But we need to say, God, come on, if you did it for them back then, yeah. and we have the same Don't set of circumstances that were going yeah. on in Jerusalem and Galilee back then, we need the same manifestations, yeah. if not greater, today. Yes, Lord. 
Because after all, he does say, in greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. He did say that, didn't he? He did. He said, in greater works. Not meaning that you're going to be greater than Jesus, but there are so many more of us here in the earth. Just imagine just the number of people you look around the room. My gosh, can you imagine if just the phenomenon, if just our spit alone, touch somebody, and before right. you know it, they got their vision back. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It wasn't even something that we planned to do. Yeah. I don't think Paul or Peter set out to walk past people and to for them to be healed. They were probably going to do the traditional thing, maybe to pray for them, but they didn't realize that what they carry, the glory that they carry, it just dripped from their lives. Man. And that's Wait, that's what I pray, that we would experience the glory that drips from our lives. We don't even realize it's there. Yes. It's Amen. there. Amen. But I know that to get there uh, requires uh, time with God. I know that. I know that. It, it requires that time of just being immersed in his glory. It's, it's something that I'm not working this summer. That's one of the things I plan to do, is to just get in his presence Amen. more and more and to cry out for more of the glory. More of the glory. More of the glory. I want to experience more of the glory. More of the glory. Not just in my life. Because I just, the, the treasure is in earthen vessels, let's face it. That the excellency would be of him and not of ourselves. No, none of us wants to have a ministry with all of this glitz and glamour. My God. Sometimes I wonder how people on television can do it. How they can keep up that pace that they go at. And it takes a certain grace to be able to do that. But how much more if the body of Christ walked in the power of the Spirit the way God ordained us to walk in the power of the Spirit? Amen. Hands down, that's what we did. We just walked in the power of the Spirit. He says, for to one is given the Spirit by, now check this out, at least, at least in here, at least one of us with the ratio of people in this room, have the word of wisdom. At least one of us. He says that four to one is given the spirit. By the spirit, the word of wisdom. Somebody has it. I think we hold on to it. We contain it. We're, we're more so containers than conduits. Pastor uses that word a lot. We're not meant to contain. We hold it to give out. We got to give it out. We hold it to give out. To another, it's like a funnel. You know how you have a funnel? Yeah. It comes through that big hole, and it goes out through that little one at the bottom. That's what we've got to be. We've got to be funnels. Amen? Amen. Glory Amen. to God. That's good. That's good. And we've got to be like, was it colanders? Is that what the spaghetti? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 we've got, I've seen that in the spirit also. Where, and that, that's more so like having a filter so that when his glory is poured forth through us, those things that don't glorify God, they get caught by that part of the colander, whereas they don't have to impact people and mess them up. You know, because a lot of times it's the things in our past that we can use, the bad doctrines in our lives, the apprehensions, the bad experiences in our lives that we tend to use that can mess us up. We don't want to mess other people up. We want to build them up and lift them up. That's what we want. So the Holy Spirit can help us by being that that funnel and that colander in our life to catch those things that he says, nah, I don't want that released. I don't want that released. Let's, let, let's hold that. Let's hold that. Let's hold that. Glory to God. Uh, he says, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. There are words of knowledge in this place. But our mouths have to be used for his glory. And not for his glue. We've got to use them for his glory. So that means certain things we just don't want to come out of our mouths. Because God, I want my mouth to be used for your glory. I can speak a word of wisdom. I can speak a word of knowledge. To another faith by the same spirit. This is different from, this has got to be a different type of faith. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? I, it's got to be different than the saving faith. 
This is a faith whereas you, you, you desire something from God, you don't even have the faith to believe for it. I've got the faith to believe for it. God's going to honor the faith that I have to believe for it so that you can get the manifestation of it. All of it is a miracle. Every one of these are miracles. We need to operate in miracles. Amen. Come on now. He said, to another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. It's not always an Aleve or a Tylenol or Motrin. Come on. That's right, man. Gifts of healing. Gifts. That means there's more than one. More ways. Jesus, he exhibited just a few more. How do you go to somebody you spit in the dirt, make mud, you put it on the man's eyes? Or you just speak the word. The centurion came to him, said, you know, if you just speak the word, my servant will be healed. He said, I've never seen such great faith like this. This is a Roman. It wasn't even a Jew in Israel. Go to your house. Your, your servant is made whole. There are, see, we have to realize, that's why I'm so glad you're preaching on righteousness. Because I think one of the things that has held us back, we think because, you know, I, I, I messed up yesterday. I didn't have the right thought a minute ago. You know what I'm saying? You have a body, and your body is not, has not been redeemed. <laughs> it's not saved the way your spirit and your soul are. So a lot of times we tend to listen to the conversation by the enemy that paralyzes our ability to move beyond the level where we are because we're always looking back at ourselves and we see ourselves in a mirror, but we've got to see ourselves in the perfect law of liberty. How God is not going to use anybody else but you and but me. Amen. That's what he's going to use. He's going to use you and he's going to use me. He's going to use the body of Christ. He knows we're jacked up. That's why we've been redeemed. We know how to deal with our minds. We cast down thoughts. You can say, I cast you down thought. I cast you down imagination. I cast down everything that tries, right now is trying to exalt itself against the knowledge of God in my life right now. I'm bringing every thought captive to obey Christ. I'm lining back up in the name of Jesus. Lord, you can use me. Yes. If I sin, thank you, Father, I have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, use of propitiation for my sins, not for mine only, but for the sin of the entire world.
Then the, it says discerning of spirits. Oh my gosh, yes. man. Well, that saved a lot of us from uh, a lot of uh, heartache, right? If we could discern spirits. And I don't mean just like, oh, he ain't right. No, I mean, he looks like he's right. At least to you, he looks like he's right. And then the Holy Spirit says, tells you something like, oh, wow. You can't even tell anybody what he just told you. Mm -hmm. When you discern, you can't even tell anyone. Because what they'll do is because they didn't hear the Spirit, and you heard the Spirit, they'll talk me out of it. He says, to another, divers kinds of tongues. There are all kinds of tongues. There's a tongue of men, there are tongues of angels. Mm -hmm. To another, the interpretation of tongues. There's in, we're in this room, we can interpret tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit divided to several to every man severally as he will. So when we are in an assembly, there should be the ministration of the Spirit of God. Right. These gifts. Why do you have love, but you don't have tongues? Why do you have peace, but you don't have the word of knowledge? No more than that. No more than that. Why do you have faith? You know what I'm saying? There's even, a, there's even faith as the fruit, and it's faith as a gift. Did you see that? Because mm -hmm. both faith is listed as both. Mm -hmm. We should see these things. Yes. We get practice for them here, because you know what? We got to use them out there. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Not, people are not going to come in here for us to use them. Yes, sir. We got to go out there. You know the people you have to impact. Okay, I'm going to try to, to get away from it, uh, this just a little bit. Okay? You can, you can go ahead and read the others. But what hold, the glue that seems to hold it all together is that whole 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians where he talks about love. It holds it all together. I mean, just read 13.1. Though I speak with the tongues, it, you, and it's something that he, he names tongues. Why does he do that? Because it was the first manifestation at Pentecost. They spoke with tongues. He, and you know what Paul is figuring? That we all move beyond this. I don't, want it to, I don't want to be the type of Christian who never experiences of things other than tongues. Amen. And I don't despise tongues. I love tongues. I will pray in tongues, speak in tongues. I love Tongues, tongues, tongues. I'm so thankful for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's the language of the kingdom of God. We should be speaking in tongues. And it's the beginning to open up the door of the flow of the Spirit. He says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. So guess what, folks? We can speak in angelic tongues and we can speak in man's tongue. It's the tongue of men and it's the tongue of angels. And you know, you might not necessarily know exactly what tongue you're speaking in. And you know what? That shouldn't even be an issue. Because the Spirit can give you the interpretation and have not charity. And it's something because he, some, some interpretations here say love. But charity is an act. It, they, they're trying to take it further. It's not a feeling. It's an act. Yeah. Like a charitable donation. You give to a charity. It's, it, you can see it. Right. You, there's, a, there's a recipient of it. Hello. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody's getting the benefit of the charity. Yes. And I become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Clink. That's why I took off this hearing because it would have made a lot of sounding. It would sound like a sounding brass in my ear hitting against the microphone or a tinkling cymbal. It's irritating. <laughs> That's what God says. It's irritating. You're irritating. You're making a lot of noise. You're talking loud. You ain't saying nothing. You remember James Brown's song, right? <laughs> and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Charity suffers long as kind. Envy if not charity, vaunt if not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly. Seek if not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never fails. That's what's kept this country alive, is charity. That's what's kept America alive and thriving. That's why people have come to America because of charity. 
because we've opened our doors to many foreigners who have come into this land because of charity, because of love. Yes. It says, charity never fails. Love will never fail. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. For when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood a child. I thought as a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. Put away childish things and walk in maturity. Yes. That's what be ye perfect, for I am perfect is all about. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean don't ever make a mistake. It just means mature. Grow up. Mm -hmm. Grow up in the Lord. Grow up in him. He says, and now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. And now abide in faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Then he says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. Let's move to the next level, he says. You got tongues, let's move to prophecy. He's advancing us. He's showing us, follow Adventist charity. And then he tells us in, in verse 2, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man speaketh understandeth him, how being in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. That's what God's called us to do. Edify, exhort, and comfort each other. It blesses us when a word can come forth from an instrument. Ushers at the door can give someone a prophetic word. They walk into the house of the Lord. And someone can, and the Lord can say, that particular person needs a touch from the Lord. And I want you just to touch them. Just to hug them and tell them you're so glad that they're here. Sometimes you just do that one thing. And before you know it, because you just obey God in that one act of obedience, the spirit begins to flow through you. And before you know it, you begin to pray for the individual. And you begin to pray different things in their life that they wonder, how is it that you know about these things that you are praying about. I just walked into your church. Mm -hmm. These are the things that he says here in the book of Corinthians. If somebody comes in and a prophecy is given or a tongue is given and it, someone says, well, what are they doing speaking my life? Or how did they know I was going through that? Because the spirit so badly wants to touch the lives of people whose lives are like a blank slate. See, he has always been there hovering over creation. Amen. He's always been there. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was, was, was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. See, the Holy Spirit was there mm -hmm. when there was void, mm -hmm. darkness over the face of the deep. He came, hovered over creation. He's, we need him in the midst of chaos and, and craziness. <laughs> he's still, we need him. He's the one that gives life. Amen. He's the one that gives us light. He gives us illumination. He gives us revelation. He gives us manifestation. Okay, I'm going to just go a little further because I've got just a few more minutes. Now, let me just go to, let me just pull up some things here. Uh, let me just go through some things in Peter's life. Let's go through the first screen. Glory to God. <clears throat> I talked about this, but Jesus begins his Galilean ministry. Galilee was in this site of frequent violent storms. This is where Matthew, Matthew's accounts happened right there in Galilee. This serves as a backdrop of the many powerful, passionate, and purposeful encounters that Jesus had with mankind as he began his itinerant ministry. I'm taking it to the next one, please, Patty. Matthew has so many accounts of Peter. The Lord told me, look at Peter's life in Matthew. Just look at his life. I didn't realize how much of his life was right there in Matthew. Matthew 4, 18 through 20. He's the first disciple that's called to Jesus. But you know what God called him? He called his brother right along with him. There was Simon Peter and there was Andrew. But you know what's something? I tried to look for more of Andrew. There's not a lot that it says about Andrew. 
Peter followed Jesus passionately, purposefully, and powerfully, even to the dead. It is even believed that when the time came for his death, he honored the Lord so much, this is what the tradition of the Father said, that he wanted to be not crucified the same way that his Lord and our Lord was crucified. But he felt that he wasn't even worthy to suffer the same type of crucifixion, but that his crucifixion would even be more severe than our Lord's crucifixion. Matthew 4, or Matthew 8, verses 14 to 15. Jesus gets involved with Peter's life. He has a mother-in-law. He has family. <coughs> Jesus goes and visits the family. The mother-in-law is sick. You know what? Jesus healed the woman while he's visiting the family. And after he healed her, it said she ministered to him mm -hmm. and the others. Mm -hmm. You have to read it in the scripture. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Matthew 10, 1. He is given power. That's where all of the disciples' names are actually mentioned, the ones that he called to himself and handpicked and chose, where he gives them power. He gives us power over unclean spirits, as it's yes. unclean, unclear spirits. It should be an end. Unclean spirits, and they were able to heal all manner of disease. This is what he did for Peter. Matthew 14, verses 13 through 21, and verses 22 through 34, where Peter is there when Jesus, he went, he's a witness to Jesus feeding 5,000. 5,000 people with the fish and the loaves of bread. That's not including the children and the women. And then after that experience, because you'll see where 13 through 21 is where he witnesses the 5,000 being fed. And then after that, he walks on the water. Because Jesus, after he had, he had that experience of feeding all those people, he went to a desert place to pray. And he sent his disciples on a boat ahead of him. He said, I'll meet you on the other side. You remember that? And then before you know it, they encounter a storm. And him knowing that they would encounter a storm, he's walking on the water. That's our Lord. There's all kinds of storms. See, you know, Galilee is that place of terrible and violent storms. We have storms in our lives. Jesus still walks on the water to meet us. He still lets us know, I'm going to meet you on the other side. I know, you, I know it's rough right now, but you're going through. He says, I'm going to meet you on the other side. I'm going to meet you. He says, I'm going to meet you on the other side. I'm going to meet you. I'm going to meet you on the other side. You're going to get there. I'll meet you there. And he meets them because he's a God of his word. Matthew 16, 13 through 20. He gets this divine revelation of Christ. God, Jesus is with the guys. He says, man, uh, who do men say that I am? Christ. You're the son of the living God. Flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, Peter. But my father, which is in heaven. This is a man who was a fisherman. You know, he, he, he didn't have fine clothes, nice shoes, you know, nice suit, nice bow tie and everything. He was a dirty, old, smelly old fisherman. You know, you don't need to have odor to him, you know? But Jesus saw his potential and he chose him. And he gets this divine revelation. He knows who Christ is. And then right after that, listen to this. Look at this. The next verse, Jesus has to rebuke him. Because here he is. Jesus is telling them, you know, that I've got to go away. I've got to die. Peter said, no, no, no. You ain't going to die, you know. And Peter's trying to hinder him from doing what he's been called to do with Jesus his purpose for coming into earth was to seek and to save that which was lost and how he has to be that sacrificial lamb to, to die for the sin of the entire world. And, and, and Peter, because he's so God ho man, because, you know, he loves the Lord and, 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 and he's making a difference in his life, he, he, you know, he's trying to stop Jesus from doing what he has to do. This is after experiencing 13 through 20, a tremendous high. Can you experience a tremendous high in Jesus? Yes. And can he rebuke you in the next breath? Yes. yes. Oh, hey, come on. Did you have to do that in front of everybody? <laughs> he didn't leave. That's what I love about Peter. You have to love that about him. He doesn't leave the church. He doesn't leave Jesus. You know, he gets offended. And it's something because I, I, the more I studied about Peter's life, and I don't have time to go into this in depth. You, you're you're going to get some great downloads from the Holy Spirit as you look this over. But the more I studied him, I, the more I saw where he had to 
Jesus had to keep dealing with him about offense, offense, being offended. That's, and, I, and, I, and I find out more and more, that's the one thing that will choke, choke productivity in, in a seven, is offense. When you're offended, you know, something bothers you. If you the only way you won't be offended is if you ever buy yourself, you just buy yourself. You never deal with, you'll never want to deal with nobody, and you probably will offend your own self. Can you imagine that? They knew exactly who the prophets were. 
There were no, there was no Facebook. Thank you, Leah. There was, there were no tweets. Hallelujah. We couldn't hear a drop. Okay. There was, there was no email, but they knew exactly who those two men were, Moses and Elijah, that Jesus was talking to on the mount. They knew exactly who they were. And you know what? Sometimes we don't always know how to handle the spirit. Because people say, okay. <laughs> oh my God, I'm running all right now. I know who I saw. Let's build three tabernacles for you guys. You know, sometimes we don't know how to respond. We don't know how to respond because it's just like it's so overwhelming. We don't know how to respond. But Jesus had to just get him straight. Didn't he hear the Father's voice? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. They saw Jesus turn from the inside out. He became glorified in their midst as he's talking to two of the prophets. He, and then after that, listen to this. He's questioned about paying tribute. You know, I told you you have a tremendous highs in your life, and then you get something that hits you at a low. Somebody comes up to him, hey, you and Jesus pay taxes? He's like, wait a minute. I'm going to answer these people. I've been sitting around Jesus long enough. I'll, I think they're trying to get me. They're trying to trick me. I've seen Jesus like, deal with these people before they try to trick him. Um, yeah, yeah. We, we, we won't pay taxes. We won't pay taxes. You and, you and Jesus, y'all pay taxes? That's basically what the conversation was all about. Yeah, Jesus said. Peter comes back. Jesus sees Peter coming back. He knows his countenance and what's in his heart. Hey, Peter, what's up? What's up, man? What's up? What's, what's wrong? Well, what'd you just deal with over there? He didn't want to say anything to Jesus. <laughs> oh, this is what I need you to I love the conversation. I can't go into the conversation. You've got to read it yourself. This one you've got to read yourself. But Jesus, he says, listen, go on to the water. And uh, the first fish you catch, open his mouth. Mm -hmm. Take the coin out. Take the taxes for both of us. Let's take care of this. All right, let's move <laughs> that went on. I, I, but that's some of the things that <coughs> download. Matthew 26, 31 through 35. Peter's vow of loyalty. I will go down to the end with you. I got your back. I got your back. I got your back, Jesus. I got your back. Watch out for people tell you they have your back. Because <laughs> they will leave you. The only one who has your back is Jesus. He's the only one with your back. He's the only one. And he vows loyalty. And guess what? He says, huh, I will never leave you. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna leave you. He says, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna die with you. He says, Jesus said, Peter, I'm gonna tell you what, before the cock crows, you're gonna deny me the fire's turned up. Even Jesus knowing that, the same chapter is time to watch and pray because they're in Gethsemane. They're in Gethsemane. Peter, James, John, they're in Gethsemane. And he comes back, and Jesus is sweating blood drops because he knows he's about to go to Calvary. Mm -hmm. He knows he's about to go to Calvary. What happens? He sees, man, can y'all just pray with me one hour? One hour. One hour. Unfortunately, we don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. We don't. Yeah. We don't know how to do it. All you have to do is do it. We have too many excuses as to why we don't do it. That's right. We don't do it. So there must be something behind intercession for one hour. Come on. He's the timekeeper. God deals in cycles and seasons. He said, you can do it an hour. Watch and pray for me. Watch and pray for one hour. Just think about how we'll revolutionize our lives if we could do it for an hour. I think you get so caught up in the spirit, you don't even realize it's an hour. Because you serve a God who says a thousand years, this is how he thinks, it's a day. So really, it's been, what, two days <laughs> since Jesus left. In a few seconds. <laughs> Come on now. 
If we see it the way he sees it, it's just yeah, been two days. That's right. yeah. Come on, if we see it the way he sees it, right. it's been two days and a few seconds since he's been. <laughs> because this is what happens when you don't watch and pray. You, you, you act in the flesh. When you should be acting in the spirit. See, it was inconvenient for Peter to stay awake. Why? Because he's tired. Oh, I'm sleepy. My eyes are tired. Apparently, there's something that we have. Prayer is never convenient mm. Mm. for this. Mm. This will always fight the head this way. This one's fried chicken. <laughs> why, can't it, why can't it get up to answer the, uh, a chicken call? An Oreo call in the middle of the night. You know what I'm saying? A jelly bean call. I'm just saying because we know in our house what we deal with. We know. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, some people have to put miniature refrigerators in their room, you know. You know. You understand what I'm saying? You know, you can get up for a chicken call. You can get up to have sex in the middle of the night. You know what I'm saying? We know what it is that we do to satisfy the flesh. We'll break it up. But he says, I need you to pray. And what happens when Peter does not enter into prayer? When the time comes for GC, this is the thing that we gotta realize. The Lord is on a time clock. Whether we're ready or not, he's gonna do what he has to do. We wanna be ready. Amen. We don't wanna go against the time, we wanna flow with him. Amen. Because when he was finished, and he knew it was time for Judas to come and get him, he couldn't wait for the boys to wake up. Oh, come on, y'all, come on, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all, get up, get up, get up. You're waving the bed and you're making all kinds of noise. He told him to sleep. He knew they were going to move. He knew he was on his own. But thank God, he sent angels. The Lord sent angels to strengthen him. So guess what? We could have been doing, they could have been doing with the tongues of men and angels, we could be doing the things that we're equipped to do by the Spirit if we do them that angels sometimes have to intervene for because he's already told us to do it, we won't do it, so now they gotta intervene. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Where we don't realize we are supernatural people. The Holy Ghost is a supernatural being on the inside of us. Yes, it is. So there are things that he has asked us to do and he's instructed us to do because we have that supernatural being on the inside of us. And a lot of times, we're not doing it. So what does he have to do? He's got to send angels. Wow. Wow. And this is why the chief one hates us so much. Mm -hmm. Because he knows the power and the authority that we have. And when we don't use it, oh, he's gloating in the glory. Uh, uh, uh. God, pray. Your people? I don't think so. Wow. <laughs> Not your people. Your people? That's why he went to heaven for Job. For Job. He went there. For Job. But God said, no, you can go ahead and touch him. I know this one. You won't take him, you won't take him through the ring, but he's gonna come through. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, his confession is gonna be, though he slay me. Yeah, yeah well, I trust him. Yeah. Talk about being operating in Pentecost at a level of the anointing we've never known before. We gotta get there. Yeah. You gotta be hungry. Probably 
move just in time, God is here. What does our Lord do? Oh, God. <laughs> what does our Lord do? Heal the ear. Put it right back on. Woo! Wouldn't that have been enough for them? And then he denies Jesus three times because he fulfills what Jesus said he was going to do. But he witnesses the resurrection. And then this is this. I'm going to close. You know, so there's a lot of doubt and unbelief whether he would rise again. They were distraught, man. They were distraught. Can you imagine <clears throat> seeing Jesus being crucified, blood everywhere, knowing he hadn't done anything wrong, all the things they're doing against him. And then Peter feels like a failure. You, they probably heard about Judas by this time. You know, they're running for their lives. They're scared. And it was just... Uh, they, they, the backdrop of Galilee, Jerusalem, it's just a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. God, why'd you do this? Why'd you call me? Why'd you call me? Why'd you mess my life up like this? Why'd you put these, these high hopes in me? Why'd you make me think while you were here these three years that, that I was a better person? I was going to be better. Look at you. You're dead. You're gone now. But he rises from the dead like he says. He does rise. Mm. Something does yeah. come. And then when the women go to the tomb, they tell the disciples, and the angel says, tell my disciples and Peter. Because the Lord knows our names. He knows how to reach us. Patty, you can go to the next slide like this. He knows how to reach us. He knows how to reach us. You can start playing Todd, if you want to. Do the next one. Are you impulsive? Any impulsive people? You ain't got reason. Sure. <laughs> Just so good. Living within your limits. I got this out of my Bible. I love this. I'm going to put this quote up here for you. Are you impulsive? Are you quick to step forward with a plan of action? As the exchange between Peter and our Lord in Matthew 16, 22 and 23 shows, there were times when Peter liked to take charge quickly and settle the agenda for himself and others. Is that you? <laughs> Just as often he found himself in over his head. So many times he found himself in over his head. You'll find yourself in over your head with things. When Jesus came walking on the water to a storm tossed boat that held his terrified disciples, Jesus demanded, Peter demanded that he show that it was he, by a big Peter, also to walk on the water along with him. After a few steps, Peter noticed the wind and the waves promptly, and he sank, requiring Jesus to rescue him again. Go to the next slide, please, Pat. We find ourselves in these things. He overstated his commitment to Christ, claiming that even if I had to die with you, I would not deny you yet. Only a few hours later, he denied having any association with the Lord and even used profanity. Mm -hmm. yeah. He even cursed. Yeah. Yeah. He cursed. He took charge of defending Jesus against Roman soldiers when they came to arrest him, even though he has failed to watch and pray with Christ as has been requested. He refused to allow Jesus to wash his feet at the Last Supper. You remember that? Mm -hmm. They called on him. Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you have, I have no parts of you. He says, look, don't just wash my feet. Wash my hands, my head. Wash every part of me. Eventually, Peter's leadership skills were captured in the more controlled spirit, and he became a significant figure in the early church, despite many false starts. And that's what happens a lot of time with us. We start something, we seem like we don't complete it. You know, we get to a certain distance, we just seem like it's hard to get from point A to B to C to D. But you know, slow and steady wins the race. Before we know it, we started at A, we're already at G. We just gotta get to Z. We might not know how long it takes to get to Z, but we'll get there because the Holy Spirit is there to help us. Amen. Amen. He says he's a, he was a significant figure in the early church. Despite many false starts as a result of Peter's impetuous nature, Jesus listed this impulsive but loyal follower to feed my sheep. That's what he says to us today. Let's all stand. <laughs>